Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built. And first up this week, I've got to get stuck in and fix up this dodgy seat. All right, first up, I'll just do a little bit of housekeeping and. Um, I was happy to be informed this morning that the engine has arrived at Performance Developments in LA, so that is a great first step. That brings us back to the first task of today, and that is to sort out this seat. I rushed doing these uh, panels in the center, and I wasn't happy with this middle panel anyway, but uh, now all I can see is the fact that the tartan doesn't line up. I worried about the center line and didn't even think about how this seat is going to match up with that seat and they're all way out so I'm going to redo all of them and the other big issue that I have is this leather is just it's just so saggy and loose so my thought is to actually go through and pinch and mark it and then I'm going to unpick it and re-sew it so it uh, gets rid of some of this saggy bagginess Alright, so I've gone around and I've marked with uh, some China Graph pencil where I need to bring in the pattern. I'm going to go through and unpick these areas and then re-sew them together and hopefully um, it will still look okay. The issue that I know I'm going to have is that when you sew into the leather, it actually punctures the leather. Let's start unpicking and see what we've got. reasonably happy with how that fits it's uh, much better than it was and uh, now I need to go through and double stitch everything and um, hopefully it looks a bit neater than it did before all right while I'm waiting for the glue to dry on my double stitching I've got to come back to these cushions and what I need to do is I need to strip them down so that I can remake them so they line up with the other one Alright, I've sewn this up and I realise it's come up pretty good actually, it's uh, not looking too bad. I looked again and I was going to bring it in up in this top corner up here because it was it's sitting loose a little bit, similar to this seat just here, how it's a little bit loose there. But, if you have a look at the design of the foam and see how there's no foam in these parts here, which is actually where it's sitting low. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this foam and make up a pad that'll fit in this, these corners here to sort of give it a little bit more substance and then hopefully it'll puff it out just enough so that it looks nice and neat and we're all good. Well that is a heap better than it was and uh, I haven't even touched it with a heat gun yet so I'm going to leave that for now and I'll get stuck back into the cushions. There's the two cushions next to each other and that looks much better. So uh, there's one down, so two more to go. Pretty close anyway. All right, second lot, not as perfectly lined up, but um, they sit in the cushion in, the, in there like that, so they're pretty close. All right guys, just a quick update on these window frames. So. After getting a lot of responses from you guys during the week, what uh, it comes out is that they're actually not chrome. They're actually uh, a polished aluminium that has been clear anodized. So what I've done here is I've gone through the clear anodizing. It seems like there's plenty of guys out there who just get the anodizing off, polish them up, and just keep polishing them every six months or so. Now, I don't want to do that, but there are 
some clear coats that I've been looking into that will seal it in and stop the oxidization, but they don't yellow and they don't crack off and peel. But uh, if any of you guys have got any experience with that sort of stuff, I'd love to uh, hear it and know which ones work and which ones don't. And um, yeah, that would be uh, quite handy to know. But um, moving right on now, I think we might start working on fitting these rear windows. Everything changes. Okay, so as you might have seen, I've been cleaning up these rear quarter windows and I removed the old rubbers which were old and perished and not going to seal anything. So I got rid of them and I bought brand new genuine rubbers for both windows. The issue I am now coming across is that it's really not that easy to put the uh, rubber back into this groove that goes all the way around the edge of the windows. This groove is shaped like, like that. So the rubber has to come in and clip in underneath the edges here. So I've uh, done a bit of research and uh, on what other people have uh, done to try and get it to fit and some people suggest soap and water is a really good way to go and uh, others have said that even better is uh, WD-40. So uh, WD-40 is quicker to hand so I'm gonna give that a go and see if we can get these rubbers mounted back into their trim. Okay, I can confirm that WD-40 makes it so much easier. Before I started, it wasn't going anywhere. The WD-40 is fantastic. The main issues I had were these top corners, which I don't even want to touch now because it keeps popping back out again. They're staying there now. I finally got them in, but uh, fitting it in these edges was quite easy. The back edge was difficult, but these top corners was the real troublesome part. We've got it in, and uh, now I can go ahead and start mounting them into the car. All right, so before I can install these rear quarter glasses, I've got to install these two trim panels and these sit underneath them on the edge of the body. And the issue I've come across with these is they had a bunch of these sort of raised washers underneath them. There's two left on this one and there's a big lump of something there and basically most of them are lost. They're also previously wrapped in some black sort of sticker material or something and that would have given them a bit of a buffer along the edge between the edge of this metal and the paint. I have no idea what they're supposed to have on them or whether they're supposed to have some sort of foam padding underneath or something. I have no idea. But what I'm thinking is I've got a bunch of this old sound deadening, so what I'm gonna use is I'm gonna use the rubber off of this and cut strips the right size along the base and use the rubber underneath them as a bit of a pad. Alright, so after a lot of messing around and uh, wrestling with these side windows, I've managed to get them in the car. Because there's such new rubbers on them, there's such a tight fit into this space, they were really quite a lot of, a lot of wrestling to get them in there, but they're there and uh, hopefully, because they are so tight, they won't leak. But um, that is still to be seen. Anyway, um, because I've wasted so much time stuffing around with these things, I think it's time for Fun Facts with Mrs. Jeff. With Porsche's current switch to an all-turbo liner, with some GT exceptions, I thought it would be fitting to go back to Porsche's introduction of the turbo. After the success of the 917 race cars, with their flat 12 turbo engines, they decided to develop turbo engines for the 911s. So they could compete in GT racing, they had to build at least 400 cars. They decided to build 1,000, but that number blew out due to their popularity and they became a regular part of their lineup. All right guys, I know for the last several weeks I've just been going more, just doing interior, 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 and I really feel like I'm not getting anywhere, but it is gradually getting closer and closer to <laughs> being put together. It's just so tedious. Every little piece is so tedious. So, um, 
Anyway, that's it again for another week. Um, next week, hopefully, I can get some more stuff buttoned up. I still haven't finished that seat. There's still more bits to go. Anyway, uh, if you're enjoying the videos, as always, please like and subscribe to my channel, Home Built by Jeff, and you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram at the same place. See you guys.